Hi again, everybody. I got cut off at the la end of that last video by mistake. But to go over what I was saying, um, the difference between the evolutionary difference between DNA for prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that prokaryotes, the simpler form of cell, uses a, um, a single strand of DNA in the cytoplasm only and generally wrapped up in a circle. In fact, when you look at your chart for your lab, you're going to be looking at a bacterial cell or a prokaryotic cell, and you are going to be choosing between these three shapes. Um, <laughs> get it kind of backwards, okay? One of the shapes is a cocci shape, a spherical shape. One of the shapes is a spiral shape for some uh, prokaryotic cells and the other is a rod shape or a bacillus shape and you are going to be putting in a circular strand of DNA because that is the way the DNA looks in the cytoplasm of a prokaryotic cell whereas in a eukaryotic cell the DNA is in the nucleus so each of these cells is going to have ribosomes just small circles, they're actually circles in two parts that act as a staging area for assembling proteins from the code that evolves from the DNA, moves into the RNA, and onto the ribosomes into a protein. So the simpler form, the prokaryotes have a singular strand of DNA in a circular pattern in a region of this very small bacterial cell or archaea, um, archaea cell. And the eukaryotes have bigger cells with double-stranded DNA in a membrane-bound nucleus to protect it even more. In addition, we want to talk about other things that they have in common. One of the things that both pro prokaryotes and eukaryotes have in common are is the cell membrane. And that cell membrane separates the cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance that holds all of the contents of the cell. So the cell membrane protects the cytoplasm from the extracellular space extra meaning outside of, extracellular space. And the cellular membrane functions to allow and regulate transport in and out of the cell. Let's explore that a lot more. This regulation of inbound and outbound traffic is in large part due to diffusion processes along the cell membrane. But let's explore the cell membrane first before we get into the diffusion processes. The cell membrane is also called the plasma membrane. Equal thing. Cell membrane, plasma membrane. Means the same thing. Generally, in your book, it's referred to, uh, in your text, it's referred to as a plasma membrane. In, um, and in your lab, it's often referred to as a cellular membrane. Pretty sure. Um, you may also hear about these membranes described as the fluid mosaic. And the fluid mosaic, both of those words are very important. The, this fluid mosaic talks about the flexibility of the cellular membrane um, to provide structure for the cell and the, also the, the fluidity of moving molecules in and out of the cell. And the mosaic means that the membrane is made up of many small parts, like an art mosaic. So you may hear the term fluid mosaic to describe the plasma membrane. But as we said, the plasma membrane is an umbrella term for cell membranes and nuclear membranes. Remember, we're only going to have nuclear membranes in eukaryotes that have a nucleus. When we're moving um, molecules in and out of the cell, we have a couple of different ways to do that. In this lab today, we're going to be focusing on passive transport. 
And diffusion, we'll get into this because I have it all laid out for you. Diffusion is passive transport that involves small molecules in diffusion and larger molecules in osmosis and facilitated diffusion for largest molecules or for charged molecules. We're going to be spending most of our time on passive transport. There are other systems for active transport and other systems for bulk transport. Our lab is on passive, which is the vast majority of the transport across the cell membrane. How does that cell membrane work for that fluidity and for that mosaic? Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have the same structure to their cell membrane and the same function in allowing and regulating movement in and out. The structure that we're talking about is a phospholipid bilayer. Phospho meaning there are phosphate groups and lipid meaning there are lipid tails and bilayer meaning there's two layers of these phospholipid groups. They're very strategically um, aligned and they're, they have it so that the hydrophilic phosphate group, think about it, you hear about um, um, detergents that have a, um, a, a, a phosphate action because that is a hydrophilic water loving side that can release dirt. So that's how you can remember that the phosphates are on the outside um, of the phospholipid membrane and this could be the water and saline on the inside of the cell and this could be the water and saline on the extra um, cellular fluid. So the phosphates are always next to the water. The phosphates are water loving. That's why you put them into your washing detergent. And the hydrophobic lipids, which are repelling water, are all very, very tightly packed together on the inside away from the cellular saline or the extra cellular saline. So this structure with the fats in the middle lends a lot of flexibility to these cells. After all, fat is not very structural and having hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules tends to lend polarity, polarity to the uh, cellular membrane as well, which helps to regulate the materials coming in and the materials going out. In addition, the archaea cells have a, a bit of a structural entity with their cellular membranes. They have something that's unique and that subsequently moved into um, eukarya and that is called isoprene chains. Isoprene chains are stuck along the lipid bilayers on the inside and they can be um, between the phospholipid layers to add a little bit of flexibility and um, structure to the lipid bilayers. In terms of structure, think about isoprene um, chains as being like Legos that fit together very, very well and very tightly and that really um, lend themselves to building. So isoprene chains build for the archaea um, nitrogen fixation cells and for the archaea cyanobacteria cells. These compounds are evolutionarily moved into eukarya in the way that isoprene is associated with some rubber plants, remember structure and flexibility, the beta carotenes, which are in our carrots, and steroids, which certainly lend structure. In addition to that, they're related to cholesterol, which we still have to explore a little bit more on how that relationship works 
for structure, cholesterols are structural cells that repair damage. So um, there is another side you'll you'll see in your um, you'll see in your um, your your activity three that you can use. Um, yeah, I think it's right there. You can use a cell membrane with isoprene units if you want to create an archaea, um, archaea um, prokaryote, which would be like a nitrogen fixing back, um, prokaryote or a cyanobacteria prokaryote, which you definitely find in the hot springs in Yellowstone, if you've ever been out there. So you are creating your own prokaryote if you wanted to design one with isoprene, um, with, with isoprene units, you would be de designing an archaea, um, archaea prokaryote. Very cool colors for the archaea, um, prokaryotes as well. See you on the other side.